Hey guys, today I am gonna talk about kind of the negativity around the hobby right now. I ain't gonna lie, the things are getting really bad. And if you want to know how bad they are, you can go on whatnot. These mystery packs that were so popular that always didn't have any money, like, you know, it's a mystery pack. If the mystery pack gave you a good return on your investment, the person wouldn't make the pack, they would just send the pack on eBay. They would send the single on eBay. The reason that they're saying, oh, you can hit a Black Lotus, you can hit this, you can hit that card, you can hit a Trevor Lawrence, you auto, is because the majority of you will get no hits. I've seen mystery packs go on backyard breaks where the average would, you know, the way that they do it is they give you average, they give you a ceiling, and they give you a floor. The average of a pack, I think, is like $400, and people are bidding $800, $900 to try to get that chase card, which doesn't really make sense because they're bidding two, three times above the average value per pack, and they're getting hosed and hosed and hosed. That's fun. That's all fun and games when you have PPP loan money that you've embezzled, when you have unemployment money you've embezzled, when you have a lot of money that you know you embezzled. The government is cracking down on that now. We've got an army of IRS agents, and their only job is to crack down on who's been embezzling our PPP loan money, which is basically ninety percent of the people we took it, in my opinion. So we'll see how many of them go to jail. We'll see how many of them get caught. I think it's going to be a lot because if I had to guess, that's got to be like the easiest way. That's like there's sometimes when you audit a business, it's very difficult to prove things. Here, it's like really easy to prove because it's a very short period in time. It's a very large amount of money and you have access to their bank accounts. So yeah, how much research do you need? You just need a very short period of time to see all the Lambos and Ferraris and sports cards and Rolexes they bought. A lot of Rolexes were bought with PPP loan money, it turned out. A uh, very sad situation, but it is what it is. Things have turned. You know, the biggest whale on backyard sports, or one of the biggest whales, a real JR, this is a dude who'll jump into the chat, he'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in the span of maybe a few hours, maybe like even less than an hour, I've seen this guy on no phone battery and just buy, 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 buy. He joined a break last night, didn't get any hits, and now he's going to call it quits, supposedly. Will he be back? Is he a gambling addict? I don't know. But supposedly, at least it crossed his mind that this is not a good deal anymore. Two things are affecting the box breaking industry right now. Number one, the boxes are not worth it. The boxes are not worth it. So when you have a box breaker, who may not even have a distributor. They might just be buying this stuff at retail, which in, in my opinion is pretty insane, but that's what I've heard at least, that there are box breakers who don't actually have distributors. That's wild. You know, I can never box break and have, I mean, I have a distributor and I buy a buy list, so like there's some margin for me. I don't buy a retail. If you bought a retail, good luck selling it. I mean, then you have to add your 50% box breaking premium on it. And it just gets so expensive for so little value. Even when you buy a product at retail, at distributor price, which is my price, you still are not likely to break even. That's why most stores don't open their own product. That's why Rudy doesn't open his own product. Imagine buying it at retail, reselling it for 50% above retail, and then, and then what, you, the box is exactly the same as my box, which I got a distributor. So like, again, taking the Pokemon example, let's say a box is 100 retail. I have a distributor, I buy for 80. The box has maybe $60 of stuff on average per box. So I'm still losing money. And the reason that I open packs is, no, it's fun to open, but I have nobody, no store is opening all their packs, right? They want to sell the sealed box because it's worth more than if they were to open, if the box was worth more open to the store. The store would open all the boxes and never sell you a sealed box. It's just logic. Therefore, the boxes the store is selling, the price they're selling at is higher than the price they could get from the singles if they were to open that box. It's just common sense, common logic, right? Therefore, when somebody buys it at retail, the box hasn't changed. They buy for 120 retail, it still has $60 of stuff in it. So if I, the store owner who buys from direct from a distributor 
am losing money from opening the box, you surely are losing money from opening the box because I have some margin. Now add a box breaker to it, and these box breakers are charging an arm and a leg, and they're not getting no hits. Now they're charging, you know, instead of $120, charging $200 for the box break, maybe more, many times, many times more. Then, and then there's manipulation. There's, again, there's other stuff that can happen to the cards, but let's assume that everything's legit. Well, $200 a box break, your EV is still $60, but you're just paying three times what I'm paying. So if, if me, if I, the store owner who has a distributor, which I do, it's Target, cannot break even from opening a box, otherwise I wouldn't try to sell sealed boxes or hold them sealed, surely a retail customer cannot break it even. And even more surely, a box breaker participant cannot break even. Because there's people, no, there's middleman. The box breaker is a middleman, right? The box breaker is one middleman. The retail store is another middleman that a box breaker buys from. So both the box breaker needs to make margins, the retail store needs to make margins, and then distributor is another middleman who <laughs> needs to make margins. Like it's almost um, like, uh, it's almost unreal, right? You have free middleman, and then the end consumer is just getting hosed. And you might be like, Tony, don't you do a box? I don't, no, I told you guys, man, I'm not gonna sell you nothing. I don't need to. I Every pack I've opened on my channel has been my pack. A long time ago, I did Patreon. That was like 2016 or something. Something like a long, long, long time ago. But uh, that those prices were really, really fair. In fact, they were too low. And the boxes I broke were too good of a box. I mean, honest to God, I should have just you know, kept the box with myself, honest to God, like, and broke it for myself. I just put it this way. Hey, box breaking, I think is gonna die because I mean, it doesn't make sense. Like during good times, it might make sense. You're gonna pay four times just for the entertainment. Hey, just watch me break my own stuff. And it's my own feelings, right? So my reaction isn't this fake reaction for somebody. When I get my Charizard, shiny Charizard twice, I get a hit, a star me, a Misty, someone whatever. No, I feel it. It's mine. It's my hit, therefore I get excited. I cannot, I mean, I personally cannot fake and pretend to be excited when, again, maybe he's a good friend of mine or something, but like, I don't know you. You're just some random dude online who pays me a bunch of money to open boxes for you. Yeah, getting a good hit would be nice because then you pay me even more money next time. But it's not my card. It, it cannot be the same level of excitement that I, when I hit a card for myself. It just cannot be. Humans are very selfish people. And the reason that I'm faking my excitement that you hit that card is because I know when I hit that card for you, you are going to buy way more product that you probably wouldn't have bought otherwise. So I'm gonna make way more money from you if I hit a good card for you. So there is some incentive and some excitement, I agree, Where, but overall box breaking is going to take a L. You already see in the chat for whatnot, people have turned very negative. These giant whales, like the real JR, they're no longer playing in the whale land. Whale land has shut down for renovation until the economy gets better. And without these giant whales, who's gonna do these, you know, who's gonna spend millions of dollars every week? I don't think people are, unless you give them a good deal. So when I did box breaks, the idea behind a box break was really actually quite simple. It was cheaper to do a box break with a group because then Chad can get us a discount on product, right? If he buys a lot of product, he gets a discount. This is back in the olden days. He gets a massive discount. He tells us what the discount is and so on. And, and then we can Google eBay and be like, oh, the box breaker is breaking cheaper than we can get the product by ourselves. Maybe they also have a distributor and we didn't at the time. That's the box breaking I'm doing. I have a distributor, I have really good margins. I don't mind selling it to you at good margins because I have good margins myself. I don't need to charge you an arm and a leg to join a box break with me. In fact, if you don't want to do the box break, I'll break it for myself.
because at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter. You know, I, I'm paying so little for the product that I, I mean, again, hard to break even, even at the, that's why stores always sell, they never open their own product, right? Very few stores open their own product. Uh, I do, even though I don't have like a way to sell the cards right now, because I love opening the product. It's just good entertainment. It's fun to do. And why not? Anyway, bye guys.